Hi, I am Lisa Tipton, director of the New York Youth Symphony Chamber Music Program. Hi, my name is Tyler Thomas, assistant director. Hi, I'm clarinetist Joanne Sternberg. I'm currently on the faculties of Princeton University, Juilliard's Music Advancement Program, and the Manhattan School of Music Pre-College. In the summer months, I direct two programs in Maine, the New England Music Camp Chamber Intensive for high schoolers and the Maine Chamber Music Seminar at Snow Pond for college and graduate musicians. I'm a proud alum of the New York Youth Symphony Chamber Music Program, and today I'm an even prouder coach of the Chamber Music Program. This is the seventh video in the series featuring the extraordinary chamber music of underrepresented composers. Each session highlights five composers, and today we will share the stories and short sound bites of selections of indigenous American composers. The challenge with this session is that it is difficult to find scores and recordings of chamber music by some of these artists. We hope to inspire research and performance projects to bring these works to light. For example, Louis Ballard is considered the father of Native American composition, but there are few or no YouTube recordings of his chamber works. We hope that changes. On this episode, we share the music of Jared Impichachaha Tate, Raven Chacon, Brent Michael Davids, and George Quincy, and Dawn Avery, who I'm delighted is joining us to share a few words. Sago, hello. I'm Dawn Avery, a composer and cellist of Mohawk descent, and I'm a big fan of the New York Youth Symphony. I am honored to be in the company of such great composers today, and even more so when I get to play and listen to their works. In my own composition, I like to incorporate what I call indigenous soundscapes and sentiments, such as asking a violinist to ricochet the wood of their bow on their strings, using colonial batuto to imitate rattles, or having a cellist play repeating harmonics that sound like seagulls, while the flutes may play harmonics to imitate sounds of water. I often ask musicians to speak some words in Mohawk, invoking ancestors from this land with a very ancient and musical vibration. With relationship as such an important aspect of Native culture, I also like to fuse different styles of music and to break some of the audience performer boundaries by bringing audience members on stage to accompany the orchestra in specific word rhythms while playing rattles, for example, or even tree branches. And I have asked musicians to be on stage um, or within the audience to play part of their composition. So I look forward to hearing the rest of the composers today. Thank you, Nyawa in Moha. Jared Mpichachaha Tate is a classical composer and pianist of Chickasaw descent. His compositions are inspired by American Indian history and culture, and he makes use of traditional instruments. Tate has also worked to develop younger musicians and composers and is the founder and artistic director of the Chickasaw Chamber Music Festival. With both parents involved in music, theater, and dance, he grew up immersed in classical music. His father of Chickasaw descent is a professional classically trained pianist and baritone, and his mother of Manx Irish descent was a professor of dance and a choreographer. His parents nurtured his musical talent and encouraged his work in music. By accompanying his father to tribal events, Jared heard much American Indian music among the peoples of Oklahoma. His Chickasaw middle name, Impitachaha, means high corn crib. Tate studied at Northwestern University and the Cleveland Institute of Music. Tate has said an important influence of his is Bartok, who was the first ethnomusicologist that was aware of his own folk music. He did it so naturally and so joyfully that Tate felt the impulse to do the same thing from where he came from and his goal is to show how he feels about being a Chickasaw person. Chacon is a composer of chamber music as well as a solo performer of noise music and an installation artist. He was born in Fort Defiance, Navajo Nation in Arizona and attended the California Institute of the Arts. Chacon performs in the groups Kill, Mesa Ritual, Endlings, and collaborates with Laura Ortman and has been commissioned by the Coroner's Quartet. 
Chacon's visual and sonic artwork has been exhibited widely in the United States and abroad. Chacon was a member of the Native American art collective Post Commodity, with whom he has developed multimedia installations for. As an educator, Chacon has served as composer in residence for the Native American Composers Apprentice Project, teaching string quartet composition to hundreds of Native American high school students living in reservations in the Southwest United States. Chacon has presented his work in different contexts, such as the Vancouver Art Gallery, Red Cat, San Francisco Electronic Music Festi Festival, Chaco Canyon, and the Kennedy Center among traditional and non-traditional venues. Take a listen to some of his music. George Quincy was an American composer, pianist, and conductor of Choctaw heritage. He composed for theater, dance, music, and television. One of Quincy's favorite things to do as a child was to stretch out in a bed of grass and lose himself in the sprawling night sky that covered his Oklahoma Indian land. In fact, throughout his life, he sought continued connection with nature and the rich Indian culture of his community. He was exposed to musical instruments such as the water drum and the rain stick, which he incorporated in many of his compositions. Some interesting family trivia. He had to convince his mother to let him study piano, and several years later, upon winning his first competition, he decided that he actually wanted to become a classical musician, much to his mother's chagrin, as she was trying to steer him down the road of rock and roll. And another interesting family fact, he didn't meet his Choctaw father until he was 30 years old. Quincy earned degrees from the Juilliard School. He worked with the Martha Graham Dance Company and performed at the National Museum of the American Indian. He also became an important advisor to the First Nations Composer Initiative. A CD of Quincy's music entitled Choctaw Nights captures the lyrical quality that he found appealing in American Indian music. The musical stories reflect colorful soundscapes of his childhood. Davids, an American composer and flautist born in Wisconsin, is a member of the Stockbridge Monksy community, a Native American tribe. He has composed for Zeitgeist, the Kronos Quartet, Drop Your Ballet, the National Symphony Orchestra, and Chanticleer. In addition, he writes for music for films, including The Business of Fancy Dancing and a new score for The Last of the Mohicans. Early in life, Brett studied piano and music theory under the training of his mother, and this early influ influence of his parents helped shape his future success. Davids went to Northern Illinois State University and is currently pursuing a master's in American Indian Religious Studies with Arizona State University. Stylistically, Davids' compositions are described as ambient using postmodern and customary indigenous American techniques. Many of his scores are written with graphic notation and are works of visual as well as musical arts themselves. Davis is an active participant with the First Nations Composers Initiative and has served as composer in residence with the Native American Composers Apprenticeship Project. Take a listen to some of the Last of the Mohican Suite, as well as some of the young Native American composers at the student workshop. Playing, what do you think? Yeah. Like piano, dolce, sweet. Yeah. Nice. 
Grammy-nominated world music artist Dawn Avery creates a contemporary soundscape from contemplative folk, pop, and classical elements. Her music reflects a deep spirituality rooted in her Native American heritage and love of sacred traditions. A prolific composer and active performer, Dawn Avery is also an award-winning educator. She has worked with Luciano Pavarotti, Sting, John Cage, and R.C. Nakai, and has toured the world playing Delta Blues with the Soldier String Quartet and Persian funk with Susan Dehim. Avery also composes music for film and theater productions and has composed and performed on many Native American documentaries. Avery composed for the Heather Henson of the Jim Henson Legacy production of A Jijok on Turtle Island, an indigenous-based project that led to a short run at the New Victory Theater on Broadway. Most recently, she wrote a short opera called Trials and Tears, commissioned by the New Music Alliance Theater with Ojibwe librettist Tai Defoe for the Phillips Gallery Bicentennial. Dr. Avery holds a PhD in ethnomusicology with research on the applications of indigenous theory to native classical composers and their compositions. Of Mohawk descent, Dawn Avery is committed to language and culture preservation and mentors the future generation of native composers and scholars. For further information of these composers, check out at the bottom of the video, you'll find links to the entire movements as well as other works by each of the composers. And for the next session video, we'll highlight composers from Central America and the Caribbean.